Well, welcome to another edition of uh, My Harlow, uh, My Life. And I'm really pleased to say that uh, I think it's probably the first time that uh, I've read such a sort of um, some memories with the man sitting to my left. But it's one of those things where it's the first time I've actually physically seen him. Uh, I mean, normally it's by phone or by email. So a massive congrats, a massive welcome, uh, of course, to the one and only Mr. Steve Ray. And uh, how are you, Steve? Thank you, Dave. Yes, yeah, nice to see you too, my friend. Yeah, no, I'm fine. You know, living uh, living now on the Isle of Wight, as we have done for the last 14 years, it's uh, it's a different type of uh, lifestyle. Yeah, I know. I got to, uh, My uncle used to live out there until so unfortunately he passed away at uh, the early part of the year, but I uh, uh, used to go and visit him quite regularly over there. A lovely place, and they always say, if mm. you, you can't get lost, just head for Newport and you'll never get lost. you never get lost in, on the island. <laughs> You might fall off the end of it. We don't get lost. <laughs> but uh, I mean, for me, I mean, you know, for people that uh, hate seeing my ugly mug on the Monday night show or or, or on this show, uh, this is the man to blame uh, because uh, Steve was the man that got me involved in Hawks Radio probably eight years eight eight years ago now, um, right, and, uh, and and sort of it's moved on uh, from from there. But uh, Steve, I mean, how's how's sort of lockdown been for yourself? Um, been a bit strange because we can't actually get off the island as such. Mm. Um, I, I work on the mainland and um, I normally travel once or twice a week. Uh, but there's been no sort of fast catch and ride to catch a train at Portsmouth to get to, to London. Mm. Um, so you know, I've just been stuck here. And it's, it's getting a bit boring now. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's been lots of, well, I say unfortunately, lots of people coming here on holiday, mm. which, uh, you know, it's supposed to be a lockdown. I'm going to have to cough, excuse me. <coughs> yes, it's supposed to be a lockdown, but um, uh, there's there's lots of people here. Mm. Uh, so so, what, but, so other than that, you know, we, we've just carried on, you know, going down the seafront and, and doing the things that we that we norm, would normally do. So, so whereabouts in the Isle of Wight are you? We live in Shanklin. Oh, my favourite. My favourite yeah. place, or one of my two favourite places in all the world. I absolutely love Shanklin, and it was always the place that we always used to go down to. And uh, uh, you know, it's a lovely, love it. it's a lovely place to live. Yeah, absolutely. the seafront's only about a mile away from us. Yeah, yeah. So. love it down there. Must admit, but uh, mm. I mean, what, so what are you actually doing with yourself these days then? So I'm going to have to cough again. That's right. <coughs> um, well, I work in, in the legal world. Um, I'm your know, financial controller of um, some some firms. And look after the finances of, of uh, firms of solicitors, mm. and uh, I've something I've done for for many a year. It's something I enjoy doing. You know, you've got that little niche, um, and um, like many people, and I just enjoy doing it. Mm. And I like the people I work with, which is which is really nice. So I work from home quite a bit now, mm. but I do go to the office, uh, you know, quite regularly, once a week, twice a week, something like that. Yeah. So so how did how did the the how did you sort of first get to get to Harlow Town then so I mean how do we how do we first get there well I, I was thinking about this uh, it, it came through a, a good old friend of mine sadly no longer with us uh, Billy Wiseman uh, he, he was uh, he was at Harlow Town um, as a, a secretary and um, uh, I knew him through local football and uh, he got me involved in the in the early 80s when Ian was manager in Wollstone home and uh, it was you know I was you know, just you know, playing and, and dealing with local football, then suddenly become um, thrust into the the, uh, the limelight, as it were, with with Harlow Town. Um, it wasn't long after their uh, epic cup victory against Leicester City and their, and their, their uh, match at Watford on match of the day, etc. Um, so that was you know it, it, it was fantastic, and and the, you know the whole atmosphere was 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 really good, and really it moved on from there all, all, all through you know doing doing with the secretarial. Yeah, through through the years, and you know, and I was looking looking to that the number of managers they had. And I've got a list here. Of, uh, uh, there was Ian, there was Gwyn Walters, Dave Edwards, um, sadly no longer with us. Len Glover, former Leicester player. Dave Green, very much a local player. Um, Eddie McCluskey from from Enfield. Ian Anderson, ex Arsenal. Uh, John Kendall, uh, Tommy Cunningham, the one and only Tommy Cunningham from 2003 2006, our manager, and then uh, Ryan Kirby. And um, um, it was after um, when after we moved to the island in uh, 2006. That's when I had to sort of pull away from from you know continuing with the, my day to day involvement in the football club, which was really sad. Can you remember what your first goal was, though, Steve? That you scored? Oh, not 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 in 
not when I was involved in the club. I used to pop down every so often and, and see different games at the sports centre. Um, and it was it was quite funny. You know, before I think it was called the Chicken Run. Uh, before the, the the big stand was was put up, um, I used to go down and watch watch games uh, at, at that time with the, obviously the athletics track around it. Um, and it was just it was just totally different. Um, and there used to be some big crowds there as well. Mm. Um, I, I remember seeing some, some some big crowds there, but I've got no idea of, of the uh, the games and what have you. Um, there are many games that, I've, that we that we've had many trips, you know, like to places like Kings Lynn and what have you, where you, where you have a you know big day out and uh, just just really enjoy it. Um, um, and um, yeah, various other high points and low points, but uh, you know my, my memory's shot now, so I can't try to uh, remember the exact um, you know dates and times. Mm. Can you remember what you can you remember you know. A match that does, you know, first game that you know that you can remember, you know that that you remember seeing. Oh, well, well, obviously, the, the, I remember standing on the the um, well on the banking of the sports centre watching the the Leicester game. That was uh, that was uh, that was something else back in nineteen eighty. Um, and I think I was, well, I know I was with my father-in-law watching, watching that game. And, you know, God knows how many thousands of people there were standing on the banks. But it was it, it was an un- unbelievable night. And uh, it's funny, recently I've seen the, the interview with uh, Gary Lineker and, um, oh God, former Harlow centre-half. Um, and uh, it, it, it was quite, you know, John McKenzie scored the goal. But it was, it was it's just, it's quite eerie to, um, to look back uh, at that interview and, and think about those days. And then obviously the, the 4-3 uh, game at Watford mm. when we were 4-1 down, that, that was yeah that was something that brought it back to 4-3 and you never knew what was going to happen next. Mm. So, I mean, what, what, how did you, with that though, I mean, what sort of roles did you actually have yourself uh, in Harlow? I mean, what was the roles that you sort of held in, inside of Harlow? It was the secretarial side of things and um, I used to be uh, in regular contact with uh, the... Um, Isthmian League um, with Nick Robinson, um, Alan Turvey, uh, and various other officers, and uh, wh- whom we got on really well with. Um, you know, we uh, we in those sort of circumstances, you always asked questions. If you're unsure about something, it's far better to ask or you know get their opinion on something, uh, which we did, and um, we we formed some very very good friendships and relationships with them, and and other clubs as well. It was really nice to be involved. And, and see other clubs, uh, and see you know the, the the various people. There were there were lots of personalities involved mm. in in the clubs, and um, uh, yeah, I've got a bit of a sense of humour, so I was always uh, always use that, hopefully to to the benefit uh, of the football club, mm. um, to uh, you know, to make it really nice when we went there or when they came to us, and we always looked up. When the one thing we did do when they came to Harlow Town, we always looked after them. Mm. You know the pre match and the post match. Uh, the squad of e between us was, was really good. There wasn't, I don't know, it was one occasion where there were, you know, really like any problems, but uh, we used to look after everybody. And that was what that was one big, big point. And Steve, was you, I mean, was you around with the with the fouled move to, to Royden Road? Um, yes and no. I mean, it's a, it, again, it's one of those, I'm afraid, you know, fading memories, one of those memories that that were is there, but I, I just. Uh, be honest with you, I can't remember uh, much about that move at all. Mm. Um, it's just, yeah, there, there, there were things being said, but I, I wasn't involved at, to that extent at that time. Yeah, um, I was just on, the, just looking, just just looking at the on the, the football side of things. Mm-hmm. And so, so I found out, um, uh, shall we say, in a, over the weekend and in, 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 in an interview over the weekend was if it, if it wasn't for you, uh, you know, Harlow Town wouldn't be here today. Is that true? Uh, oh well, um, I don't know who said that, and, and uh, well, that, uh, rather startled me. But that's very, very nice of whoever said it to say it. Um, it was something I enjoyed doing, um, and uh, if it, if it, it, I don't know in what particular it's referring. I think, to, I think, I think, I think the, basically, someone said that. I think it, I don't think it's the first time or the second time when the club. Uh, almost folded that you took on the um, you actually came in and took on the name or, or something along those sort of lines that you took on that 
the Harlow Town to keep to keep it. I think it might be it was it might have been the year where we, we were out of the league for a, for a year, but I think it was on the lines of that you took the name or you you you'd done something, but it was solely down to you that uh, that the, the, you know the club's still around. Well, <laughs> again, my fading memory. <laughs> I, I honestly don't. I can't remember. Um, I know uh, yeah, well, yeah, the, the memories I, I do have is, is when we were first approached by the uh, Sports Trust regarding um, what they wanted to do with the Sports Centre site and um, the, the, the view that they wanted to move us to a different site. And uh, yeah, we, we had to involve ourselves in negotiations with them. Um, it wasn't easy. Um, uh, Bill Rammel, the MP at the time, was involved, as well as John Wright from the Sports Trust and, and various other uh, people. Um, it was um, it was all done on a friendly basis, but I, I think yeah, we we had to uh, we had you know, secure tenure at the, at the sports centre, but we we had to ensure what we were moving to was going to be the right place um, for the football club, and um, I. I I've referred to it on. We actually sought advice from um, uh, the, uh, the Ryman League, the Eastman League, uh, as to uh, what we should be looking for, how we should be looking for it, and uh, use that to our to our benefit, so that we we had a little bit of power behind us, as it were. But as I say it was all done on a very friendly basis, and it took quite a while. And then when you know, Barrow's Farm was was put forward, and they showed us the the, the plans for it, it, it was extremely exciting, and. Um, yeah, when it, when it started to happen, and then when it finally happened, it was just unbelievable mm. that uh, you know the, the, this, this football ground appeared. You know, three and a half million pound ground appeared. Um, uh, you know, with a five hundred seater stand and what have you, with, with the facilities that it, that it has. Mm. I mean, did so that, that, that was really, really, yeah, really good times for us. Did that actually? Cut, did that sort of move just sort of, all of a sudden sort of come out? Overnight, almost, or was was the inklings that something like that might be coming, or, or what? What was the scenario with that? Because some other people sound as if it was almost a, a bit of a surprise that they were approached, and then it sort of moved on from there. It, it was a bit of a surprise. It, it was. It wasn't something that had been previously um, discussed um, openly with us um, or anything. It just you know one day that you know we we, we had a visit. And a discussion uh, took place as to you know what um, uh, they perceived what was going to be happening to the the sports trust and sports centre, and where we fitted into that. Mm. And um, it was say it was all a bit of a surprise. And um, yeah, first of all, it was all on paper, and then we, when it started to to um, to to come to fruition, um, and you know we eventually you know, signed paperwork. That's when you know. The only time you can actually say, you know, this is going to happen is when you when you sit down and sign yeah. the paperwork um, and you know that, that something is going to happen. So to, that was the exciting time. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the lead on to that was in, in, our, in our first season um, uh, in, in our new stadium um, under Ryan, Ryan Kirby's safe hands as, as manager. We actually got promotion. So it was nice to go to a new stadium and... Um, and, and get promotion because I think you, you, you may recall we, we won the game on penalties. It was a draw, and uh, very nice people. I can't remember the name of the club, but very nice people. Oh, yes. And um, yeah, we won on penalties. Mm. And of course, that was uh, that was shown uh, a couple of Saturdays ago. Uh, the winner, you know, the winner against Sudbury. But that must have been a that must have been a bit of a how can you put it um, a very nervous game from what I saw of it. Uh, you know, it was. Two, two nil up, looking like it was it was all over, and then they score two goals, you know, very very close to the end. I mean, it must have been absolutely yeah. nerve wracking. Yes, it was. It, it was very nerve wracking. Lovely people, and again, you you, you remember the name Sudbury? I hadn't. Uh, yeah, very very lovely people. Because I remember that they, 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 the ballroom was quite busy that day, and I thought, um, as chairman, I better say something. And um, I, uh, I I stood up and said, look, yeah. yeah you know, can I have your attention for a moment? And, and I made a little, little speech and, and I ended it by saying, I made the best team win. And I think it was their president that came up to me and said, you actually meant that, didn't you? I said, well, yeah, this is football. And although, I'm, you know, Harlow Town, I said, you know, the best team, if, you know, good luck to the best team that wins. And that, that's how we got on really nicely with them. Mm. But it was, I remember it was a great night. It went on to the early hours of the morning. Mm. <laughs> well, Mark, the, ma- the manager at Sudbury, um, I'm good, for, you know, I'm friends with uh, a bloke called Mark Morsley. 
uh, of course, uh, of course uh, Mark was actually sitting watching the replay of that game and he actually put a picture on Twitter on his Twitter account. I've been watching the game when Harlow, uh, the TV, put it on the other Saturday. The other Saturday. And, he, and I texted him and went, glad to see you're watching the channel, mate. And he came back and said, we should have won the game. It was never offside. And I must admit, it's... Uh, I'm not, I actually didn't see the goal because I was flicking backwards and forwards because I was, I was doing something else. Uh, but it was... Uh, do you remember the offside goal that he was talking about? Um, I, I vaguely remember it, but thank God VAR isn't around. <laughs> I wasn't around in those days. <laughs> Mind you, we might have still got, the, still got it as offside, <laughs> the way that's going. But what was... what was In those sort of times and, you know, those sort of good times in the, you know, at the club, I mean... What what was was that sort of your favourite times at the club that you know the move into into Barrow's Farm or would you say you got more fond of feelings you know uh, before Barrow Barrow's Farm what was your you know for you what was your you know your best time at the club? Well, the, the funny thing was the Harlow Town Football Club was I hope it still is it, it was a family club and um, after a game, particularly on the Saturday. We all, all the families, all, all involved, you know, Jeff's family, Jeff Bothwell's family and various other families. We all used to stay at the club till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, mm. um, enjoying the evening. We had uh, disco, karaoke, we had entertainment. And it was, it was just that, that, that all, all, every, we all were there with our families. We were there. Marshall and I were there with, it, with, our, with, our, with our, all our boys and what have you. And it was just a fantastic place to be, to be involved in. And um, it made it made you feel good. And then you you know the Tuesday or Wednesday night, whatever you know, night we were playing, we'd have a home game or an away game where we go off and, and, and do that. And it was just like a very very superb family atmosphere. And um, I often have to pinch myself today thinking of, of those memories of, of uh, you know being able to do those sort of things with with, with everybody. It was just a lovely lovely time. Mm. I mean, what, what's uh, what's your, what is your best memories at the club, though yourself? I mean, is there anything you can tell us, like some funny stories of you, maybe you know, travelling to away grounds or, or something like that, or is there is there any, any 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 sort of stories that sort of stick in your mind about Harlow? Um, oh, I, Dave, I must confess, um, uh, I was going funny. I was running through some some old programs the other day, trying to think of, of different things. Um, one of the things we 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 were the first club in the country to put a football match together for the tsunami so the proceeds went to the tsunami mm-hmm. and um we had so many different stars turn up to play and um a bill rammel played i played uh, for a while and uh, of course i couldn't couldn't wear my spectacles and i couldn't see a thing <laughs> i remember bill putting a lovely ball across for me the head and, and i couldn't see it <laughs> <laughs> it, it was quite funny, but uh, no, we had a that was a, that was quite special. We were the first club in the country, um, and we were very very well supported by uh, you know, lots of different stars who who, who came along and um, really enjoyed uh, and and made it and hopefully made a difference to those those poor people who suffered mm. from it. So I suppose that one of the other questions is what was uh, we all know what well, especially people that have uh, you know involved in the club sort of. Latterly, shall we say, like myself, in the last five or six years, maybe longer, uh, they've been involved in the club. But what was Tom like as a manager? Oh, Tommy. Well, it's funny. Uh, if I can take that question a little bit wider, um, and I, I think Tommy may uh, may agree with me. And I, I always say this to to, to, to people uh, in football that a manager has to be managed, and. I say that in the light that you employ a manager to manage your football team or teams, but you still have to manage that manager. And it's not a case of you know, sitting there, you know, sitting at a table and, and you know, directing him what to do and what not to do, but you still have to um, enjoy uh, the good times and the bad times together and be able to discuss things and, and express quite rightly the way the club is going how the club is going, um, the club's expectations. And it's by that way of managing it. And Tommy was very, very good. Mm. Can't say a word of it. You know, he always listened to what, what was going on, um, always thought the best for the club and uh, brought in some very, very good players. Um, you know, we managed to um, 
you know, to do some very good deals. And and yeah, you know, I can remember like Ryan Kirby for an example, because Aldershot is is my football team. And uh, you know, I first saw them in 1966, and you know, I, I can remember quite a bit about those. And um, we we um, Tom came and spoke to me about Ryan Kirby, <clears throat> and he was then captain of um, of Aldershot. Uh, and their manager was a guy Terry Brown, who I think a lot of people know. Mm-hmm. He's been involved in lots of clubs, AFC Wimbledon and various other clubs. And um, I remember um, going down to uh, Aldershot on behalf of Harlow Town and seeing the chairman who I knew. And, um, yeah, we, we had to talk about a transfer and what have you. And, and we captured Ryan, uh, which was um, a, a superb signing. And I always remember seeing Terry Brown uh, my last game as, as chairman of Harlow Town Football Club was actually against AFC Wimbledon, and Terry was their manager. And of course, I knew him and and uh, Stuart Stuart Cash. And um, we uh, afterwards we, we went and had a chat in a bar, and uh, he, he he bought me a beer, and he said, you know, getting releasing Ryan Kirby was the worst decision I ever made in football. He said, but I'm glad he came to a club like Harlow. He said because you know he. You know, he, he it was really good for him. It was local for him. But it was the biggest mistake he made in his career of, of mm. getting rid of him. And as I say, then Ryan went on to be the manager and got us promotion. Um, and it's like that it's the, the whole story is, is, is quite a nice story. But going back to your thing, yeah, Tom was a great guy to work with. Mm. Um, you know, he, he, he listened, he knew, he understood. Uh, he was never difficult about anything. Um, if he wanted to say something, he always said something correct, as as I did. Mm. But um, we got on handsomely, and um, uh, you know, you, you don't forget those days. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, the, the 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 real the real good times. Yeah. So how did the um, how did you then from that sort of thing? How, whereabouts in in the in that sort of uh, run of you being at Harlow did uh, Hawks Radio um, start up, and you know, and how did that sort of get to go? You know, get into fruition i mean he must have been i'm assuming a, a chat with you and with you and uh, and the boss and, and, and but, but i mean how did that actually sort of come up come come to be well i had a concept of you, know, you listen to radio stations uh you know, commercial radio stations and it's it's full of adverts and um you know, djs you know talking about themselves and it's all about me 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 and i had this concept that um you could produce through the entity of, of Harlow Town Football Club a community radio that did something for the yeah. community and involved the community in, in, in slightly different ways. And uh, it was a vision that didn't have sides or a top or a bottom. It was it was an open thing so that you could involve very, very many people um, in it. And, and hopefully uh, someone would bring something to the table when, when we advertised about you know, what we were trying to do, someone would bring something to the table that we hadn't thought about. But yeah, well, why not? We, we, you know, we, we could embrace this, we could embrace that. A bit like a hospital radio, but with a you know, much, much, hopefully, wider wider audience. And um, uh, that that was the, the goals and targets. I, I still have quite a few of the documents here from, from the original, con- you know, the concept of it and, and how that would fit in, hopefully, with, with the local market. So it's not just... Um, I think it was in, in my days it was ten seventeen in Harlow, but it, yeah, it, it it wanted to do something more than just listening to music and hearing uh, you know a voice droning on you know this this is you know Blink one eight two and that's busted and all that sort of stuff. It just wanted a bit more, so we we made things all more inclusive. So people that wouldn't ordinarily be involved in um, radio broadcasting could 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 be involved, but also that we could then embrace different organizations and promote their causes and promote what they were trying to do and what they were trying to achieve and how they were trying to achieve it through through the medium of, of hope's uh yeah, community radio mm. and it went on from there i mean did, did it start in uh from you know when i picked up on it of course it was a phone call from yourself like an email first and a phone call um but i mean did, was that did it originally start in the shop in in, in the broadwalk no, it, it started originally at the ground. Right. Uh, but then uh, then we were fortunate enough uh, through through a contact, there was a, a, a shop in, in the walk that was uh, was going to be going at some point. And they said, well, why not use it for, for community use? And we had, we had the shop. Um, 
I mean, yeah, the, the, the internet radio was very, very difficult um, in, in those days to, to uh, quantify numbers of listeners. <clears throat> you, you could look at different statistics, but it, it, it's how it was defined. And, and I think that, you know, that, that was a problem. Um, it may have been, you know, with hindsight, it may have been better to have gone for a, a, a small FM licence um, to be able to broadcast it a little bit wider and people could get it in their car radios and, and at home on their radio sets and what have you. But so it wasn't that, that, that wasn't the initial as, uh, onset. So it was, it was the club, for me, it was a way for the football club <clears throat> to communicate a bit further and wider with the local community in Harlow and surrounding areas. Mm. I mean, it was one of those things, I mean, when I, when I came on board, of course, Kate was there and as well. Yeah. And, and I, I still remember... Going in there the first day, and Kate's, I think it was a few of us there, and Kate's gone, right, okay, go on the day, let's go, and I'll show you what we've got to do, ready for next week, et cetera, et cetera. And then the next minute, she's, she's whacking on the live button, and I'm live, and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is incredible. Do you know what's, what's going on here? But I think some of the days, the memories of that were, you know, walking in and it being freezing cold, and you'd walk in there and you've got your coat on, and you're doing, this, you're doing, this, uh, doing your t- time on there. And I still remember um, we had um, the youth chairman of. Um, the Harlow Youth League come in, um, and he was probably in his mid sixties, late sixties at the time, and he he was so nervous he didn't want to come in, he didn't want to do it. Um, he, he walked into the walked into the uh, into the shop. Uh, the wife was sitting outside in the in the in the front of the shop watching her videos or whatever on her phone, and she walked past, come in, and he was terrified. He was as white as a sheet, absolute white as a sheet. And he came in, and I said, "Don't worry, John." I said, "Just like two blokes sitting down." having a chat, I said, just forget there's even mics there. I said, it's not even, not, you ain't got to worry about it. And I think by the time we got to the end of it and I actually spoke to him and I said, well, that's the end of the show tonight. He looked at me and went, what, is that it? Can I not come back next week? And he was so engrossed with, you know, with the actual show. And I think even to this day with, you know, now, of course, the, the D&K show on a Monday night, it's, it's so much different. And it's, I still describe it in the same way as I described it back in Hawks Radio days. It's, it's two guys sitting now on Skype as it is at the moment, but sitting on Skype, just sitting there, just talking about football. And, and that's how it runs. And we've always done it exactly the same way, whether we're in Hawks Radio or we're doing it via social media now. And uh, But that's, you know, the success of the show. We're getting 2,500 to 4,000 people watching it a week. And that's all down to you, sir. Well, no, well, no, well down to me. It, it, it's your your talent, Dave. And, and you know, doing what you're doing because that's you're reaching out to people and that was the whole um, concept of reaching out to people local football you've said it I mean I think we had at one time the the, the junior football league in Harlem was the biggest mm. in the country yeah and being able to reach out on a medium instead of you know, having to send emails or put pieces of paper in an envelope and send them by a post or what have you or arrange meetings you could actually do that by the power of, of, a, of a radio program on the internet, mm. uh, which which we all use, um, so but well done to you guys. I mean that that fantastic audience listening. God, I didn't realise it, but it was that uh, good. And say yeah, it, it worked. It, mm. it was it was something that that um, you know came from 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 nothing, just a thought, and 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 moved on to become something a little bit special. And uh, I'm, I'm still glad that, that you're very much involved um, and uh, and and doing doing the program you are. And it, and it was a shame because it, it moved out there because Kate Kate left and you know uh, and, and moved on and and then we moved back into the into the football club and then it sort of just yep. sort of just went a bit sour after that and it just sort of just fell to fell apart a little bit and I think at one stage I think it was the only man left I think at one stage yeah. but um, it was it was it was, a, it was a real shame yeah unfortunately um, it, my my idea of moving to the island was I could. You know, still keep in contact and do the things that that I was doing, <clears throat> and I used to come to every home game. Used to come up from the island, and you know, you're talking about sort of like four hours each way traveling. It wasn't, you know, uh, something that was, you know, you know, uh, to get there. It was four hours, and um, it became it became too much um, for me. Uh, to be honest, it became too much, and you know, I, I had to call call time on it. Um, if I could have, if, if if I if I were still in Harlow, I could have devoted a lot more time to it, and also um, have promoted it differently and and got more people involved in a different way. 
um, and uh, perhaps you know, market it a little bit different. But it, it's very difficult when, when you're calling up upon people you know, doing it in, 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 their, in their spare time mm. to be able to, to take up all that time. So we, we didn't have the finances to, um, to you know, put someone out there full time working for the organisation. You know, we were all there just doing it in our spare time. So mm. it, was, it was quite difficult. So, I mean, back to football side of it. I mean, who's some of your who was some of your favourite players during your time at Harlow? I mean, have you got some, some favourites and some memories of about some of your favourite players there? Well, um, there there are lots. I mean, you know, um, yeah, Mark Salmon stood out dramatically for me as a player, and um, yeah, I, I think he could have done. Um, say, no disrespect to Harlow Town, but could have done a lot better football wise. Um, Chapo, Danny Chapman, you know, great centre half. Um, Mark, um, Marvin. Um, oh, there, somebody played, but uh, Danny, Danny Cowley is one player that does uh, stick out in my memory as a you know, solid midfield player. And his brother Nicky. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicky didn't get that many games, but Danny was quite a solid uh, player. And um, I always remember he, he decided he want, wanted to move. From Harlow, and um, I suddenly got a phone call from him, and he said he was moving on. But to, you know, you know, thanks very much for, for everything. And I think he went on to Hornchurch, but you know, to thank thanking me for everything. And it was, he was such a nice guy. And of course, his mum and dad came to every game. And uh, then he became manager of Braintree, and um, I, I had his number and I kept in contact with him. And then he became manager of Lincoln, and uh, there was a game at, at Aldershot. And um, Lincoln were there, so I, I went. To, I went to the game, and uh, D- D- Danny and Nicky were out on the pitch with the players. And I ran down and called him over, and it, it, it was like it was like meeting a, 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 your, your old brother again. Yeah, it was fantastic to meet him and his mum and dad. We, we spoke, and I still keep in contact with him today. So I have very very happy memories of Danny. Um, oh, there were so many different players that that that, um, that were were excellent. Um, for Harlow, good, good, solid players. Um, I'm just trying to think of of, of, of other names. Say Ryan Kirby. Oh, say my, my memory's quite shot on, on lots of different things. But um, we had Bunny. There's another one, Bunny. He was a, a, a great there. And of course, they're all characters as well. And we treated them really nicely. We we we, we did the best for them. Um, and when when I I get disappointed when I hear and see other football clubs, the way that they've treated players over in, in the past. Um, and there are lots of very, very good uh, clubs that mm. treat players, but there have been, apparently been some that have not been not been um, very good. Mm. And um, we treated them really well. I mean, that was that was one of Jeff Bothwell's um, main features, that you know, if, you're, if you're going to have a football club, then every, it's got to be all-inclusive and that we, you know, when we bring players in, they're part of the, part of the family. Mm. And... Um, that's that's what we promoted, and uh, that's how we got on really well with them all. Do you remember? I mean, I mean the story. I, I mean, he he said to me, uh, Jeff, that uh, he, he he there was one occasion when uh, he felt that the team, and I'm not sure if he was around at the time, uh, that the team needed uh, needed a striker, um, and uh, he, uh, he felt he needed a striker, and he just went out and heard that it was I can't even remember what the gentleman's name was now, but there was a striker. Uh, going out there and he went out and he bought him and he actually called the manager in and said, look, he said, we need a striker. He said, there you go, I've gone out and bought you one. Uh, no, I can't, I don't remember that. I mean, that was one of the funny stories he said. And he said, the manager turned around to him and said, that's not how it's done, Jeff. We don't do things like that. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, that's down to me, not down to you. But he went out and actually bought a, bought him a striker that, just off his packet. That may have been when I was I was involved on the secretarial side yeah. rather than the um the the you know, the, the, the mm. more on the board level. But what uh, was, side of things? I mean, I was speaking to Scott Alderman and he said that the, the you know the the fans had a had a song for Marvin Samuel around his hair and um yeah. and etc. But I mean, what was he like as a character? Because I mean, I spoke to him a few weeks back and he seemed a right character then. But uh, oh, people oh, would tell yeah. me he was, he was a brilliant character. Smashing, always a big grin on his face. Um, lovely guy to talk to. Always gave you the time of day. There was never any rudeness or anything. He was just a, just a really really lovely guy. Mm. A great footballer. Mm. Um, 
around the club for, for quite a while. Mm. Um, um, yeah, it, 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 and you, you don't forget the supporters either, because mm. we had this band of supporters that, that went to every game, and uh, yeah, they they sang their hearts out. They're always you know head and shoulders above everybody else, singing and what have you, no matter what was going on. Mm. They may have been disappointed with the results, but they were still there singing and chanting, mm. which made it which made a difference. And the number of uh, club chairman and, and, and other officials that commented, oh, we wish we had supporters like yours, but, but you know, a bit more vocal to make it make it a lot different. Well, we were very lucky, mm. very lucky mm. to have those people around. I mean, do, do you still do you still sort of like uh, catch up every now and again with people at the club to, to, to find out how things are going? And, you know, do you look at results and stuff of, of, the, of the team? I look at results. Um, I keep in contact with Phil Chewson. Mm-hmm. Um, and also Graham Auger, who, who uh, came to the club um, and was secretary for a few years. He's now at Bishop Stalford. I keep in contact with, with Graham. We, we went to the same school together at Latin Bush many, many years ago. And, uh, yeah, I keep in contact with, with, with Graham. Um, uh, occasionally, I, I might hear from, from someone, but um, not. I, I don't keep in contact as in, as in, as in contact mm. in that sense. I mean, if you was if you was say, for instance, at the minute we're you know we're waiting for the announcement on on who the manager might be in the, in, in in the club, you know, for the new season. But I mean, if you was if you was if you was the uh, the new manager and you was announced say tomorrow as the new Harlow Town manager, is there a player from the from the past at your time of the club that you would you know if he could still play and he was you know he was at the in, in his prime? Is there one is there one player you would go back and go? We've got to, definitely got to get him in my team. Um. The, more than one player, mm-hmm. if I if I might be yeah. simple, there'd be a couple. Um, Tommy Cunningham would be one as a as a centre half because I used to watch him at Orient and top draw. Um, Ryan Kirby definitely um, as 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 a player um, and um, you know Mark Mark Salmon Marvin Salmon. You you want those players in your team. Um, and, and, and you know, in fact, you know, Danny Cowley, you'd want those players. That's what you'd want. You want a nucleus of your team to have those sort of players a, a, around. Um, and um, yeah, Ryan, I suppose, is is is, is one that I would um, think a hundred percent for. Um, that he would he would be a player that I would, you know, his first name. That, that he would be the first name on a, on a, a sheet for me. Mm. So, I mean, you said about Danny Cowley. What type of player was he? Was he was he a really good player? He was a good player. He was um, very methodical, um, good, tough midfield player. Um, always played his heart out for the club, um, and such a nice guy on the park and off the park. He was strong. He wasn't, you know, wasn't a, a weak character uh, in any shape or form. Very strong character, but very nice character. And uh, say so his mum and dad used to come to every game, and it was it was always in, in, enjoyable to see them. Um, um, his name was Steve. I can't remember his, his mum's name. Um, but yeah, it was just yeah. He he stands out as well. Mm. I mean, what's that? When you went when it was uh, you know involved in a club and you were going into to opponents' boardrooms and stuff, was was there one was there one ground that you used to really look forward to going to? Um, Uxbridge was was one because uh, the the um, the way we got on with with their committee and what have you, always a good laugh with them. Bournemouth was another one. Um, always enjoyed going there with the chairman. He's done very well, Bournemouth. Um, and uh, yeah, as I say I mentioned Kings Lynn earlier on, and that, and that they, they were nice people. The other clubs, not so. Sometimes not so nice. Um, enjoyed it going to Bishop Stalford because there was you know strong rivalry between the two clubs, and I knew quite a few of the people in, in their boardroom. Um, out of football, which which was which was which was quite nice, um, but um, oh, trying to think of where was another one which which were which were quite nice. But say Uxbridge and Boreham Wood were the, were the two that um, you you can remember because they they treated you you know really well. Mm. Come in, come in, and that's that, that's the way we did it at Harlow. Jeff was very strong. Jeff and the family were very very strong on on the way that we treated. Uh, of people, mm. and of course, Uxbridge now back in back in the same league as Harlow as well. So uh, that's uh, that, that's nice as well. Just as a team that you used to play back back in the back in the league. Yeah, oh well. Thing is, I don't think many of those people are around now. They, they were <laughs> quite um, 
uh, aged mm. uh, like I am now, but no, they, they were quite aged, so I wouldn't think that many of them would, would still be. It'd be nice to, to, to go around and uh, go down and see them. Mm. You for, I've forgotten names, but you know faces. Mm. I mean, as soon you, as you see them, are just, you surprised though with the success that that Harlow had and all the rest of it? That you know that, uh, and, and are you a little bit, I suppose, maybe it's a supporter wise. Are you disappointed that Harlow are not hiring the football echelon, or, or do you think uh, you know that you know that there's things that, that may be coming up that we can we we could, we could get where you know up into conference sort of level? Um, football's very fickle, and you see clubs getting promoted um, like Fleetwood Town <clears throat> into the football league, um, and then come down to Stevenage. Another club that you know were, were you know around us in the in the in the league, and then getting promoted, <clears throat> and then coming back down again to to, to the to the, the conference. They will be next season. Um, yes, I think um, unfortunately um, it, it, it's all about money, mm. and that yeah, you know, it, it's not about ability anymore. It's about who pays the biggest wage in my opinion, to a player. And um, you've got to be very, very lucky um, if you have um, a manager that can uh, get good players into the club, um, good experienced players into the club for you know, a, a nominal sum of money. They want to play for him rather than playing for the money. Um, secondly, um, and, and I believe this is happening, Harlow, where you, you build from, from down below. So you build from your youth setup, and that's always been something that um, you know, I, I've thought very highly of. That uh, and the club's been doing that. I know for a number of years, mm-hmm. working on the youth section. So you hopefully bring one or two players through each season, and, and it, you know, with a town the size of Harlow, it would be lovely to know that in X years, that the, the team is made up of, of lots of people, young people. From Harlow, who have learnt the skills um, under you know Tommy's direction of director of football, under under that, that sort of knowledge and experience is invaluable to any young player, and that Harlow could have um, a team of, of local people to be able to progress it further. Um, many many teams um, think that oh you know oh we'll, we'll we'll throw lots of money at it and do this and do that and then go bust mm. because. They've thrown money at something that they couldn't achieve. Um, they they perhaps have a chairman or a board that that doesn't perhaps understand how to manage a football club. And I don't mean that in a, in a in in a sense. I've, I made, I said this earlier on about managing the manager mm. uh, because you can see the difference in a club where the manager's managed and where the manager's not managed. You can see the difference. Mm. And uh, successful clubs they manage. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, going go, go back to the move to Burroughs Farm, I mean, sort of looking back to it now, do you, would you say that maybe it might have been a, a mis, more of a mistake now to have moved it from right in the centre of the town, the, the pit, you know, the ground, now right onto the outskirts of the ground? Would you like to see the club itself get the ground back into, if it was possible, get it back closer to the centre of the town to try and drive more people into the, in, into the ground? Oh, no doubt. The move from um, uh, the sports centre, <clears throat> as you say, right in the centre of town. It was between the railway station and the and the, the bus station. Right. Moving it to Barrows Farm was a world of difference, mm. and uh, it did make a difference. It made a difference to the, you know how people could get there. Um, we talked of, of many many ways that um, we could try and help. Jeff and I had many hours of discussions on you know whether we you know. Uh, try and run a bus or run a coach or or, or try and do something to entice the, the people to come. And yes, it, it's in a it's in a, um, a very um, different place. I don't think there was any buses running at that time either along yeah, there because you know obviously yeah. near BP roundabout and what have you. Um, so I don't I don't think uh, it was necessarily the right place for the club to go. But I don't think we had any option other than. Barrow's farm. Mm. There was no, there was no. Oh, this site might be available. That site might be available. There was no option. Mm. <coughs> yeah, I mean, with, with that, I mean, I, I always look at it just as a, somebody from the outside looking at it. When you look at the ground itself, and it's always strange to see, 
you know, the, the, the main stand side of the ground where you've sort of got the building stuck in the middle and then you've got a big sort of like, not wasteland, but, you know, you've got bits either side of it, do you know what I mean, sort of where there's no building at all. You would have thought that they may have, you know, the council, when they did it, they would have, you know, made sure that it was the full length of one side of the of the pitch. Yes. Uh, uh, one of those unanswerable <laughs> questions because we, we, we had no input other than... Uh, the input from the Isthmian League on how the ground needs to be set out in mm. a sense of what was required to get it to that standard and and further. Mm. Um, that that was uh, that was one of the things that say we we, we got advice from from the uh, the Rhyme League, uh, Nick Robinson and uh, Alan mm. Turvey, uh, to ensure that what was being built was compliant with what they required and better, mm. so that if we had if we got promotion, which we did, that we could. Keep up in those leagues. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, that's right. So, are you are you a a three G lover or are you a grass lover? Um. Well, I suppose I'm, I suppose it, it mostly I, I'm a grass lover. You can look at look at the old matches that, and you see some of the matches from the big match and match of the day where <clears throat> you know the pitches were just sea of mud. <laughs> Played and what have you, and you know, people were slipping and sliding everywhere. Um, that made a difference. But I think nowadays, <clears throat> the the um, the surfaces that are, are being made available um, that are grass um, are superb. You see that in in the you know, in in the Premier League. Um, kind of all the shop town have exactly the same uh, situation. They they look after uh, Chelsea uh, reserves. Chelsea play their reserve team games there, so and their pitch is, is absolutely immaculate. You don't see any mud or what have you. So, so the grass pitch has come a long way. But I think that um, <clears throat> the club's move to having a three G pitch was wise. Mm. I think it opened up opportunities. So someone had the forethought and the foresight to see that. So you could have twenty four seven football, and um, that has to be. Uh, a superb asset for the local community, as long as the local community uh, embrace it and, and the schools and what have you. And it, it, it's about bringing all those people in to, to that sort of environment that you've got this facility that you can use virtually 24 seven and it's uh, adaptable for various different things um, and um, that it can be used. Mm. And so I, 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 do, I do agree in, in the, on a community status with the, the, the 3G surface. Yeah, I'm a 3G man myself. I'm very much uh, a pro 3G man, I must admit. But when you, you say about pitches and about how to, how to change, I mean, I remember when, you know, I was first involved in non-league football through Dave Hodges, the secretary down at uh, Waltham Abbey. Um, mm. And uh, I remember, you know, going out to Waltham Abbey and the youth teams were always allowed to play maybe one, two games on the pitch during the season. If it was a county cup match and you were at home and, I always remember going on the pitch, and it was like you were you were on uh, South End Beach. You know, it was it was that type of uh, pitch. You know, it was yes. more sand and, and, and mud than grass. And and still yeah. remember, even to the other day, somebody put a video on the other day of uh, the international youth tournament that I was um, coach for with Dave Hodges as the manager, and they would actually mended the pitch specifically for uh, this um, this tournament and quite a prestigious tournament. And when you actually see the footage. You can see that there's, and I didn't remember it until I saw the video again, that there was about an inch lift from the normal grass to the new grass that they'd put in all around the centre circle. And you almost had to chip it up to get it onto the next level. <laughs> and the same in the goal match. But if you go and have a look at Wolfram Abbey's pitch now, and you were looking at it from a distance, you would absolutely say it was 3G because the pitch over there is absolutely immaculate. They've got under, underground, um, underground sprinklers and, and all this sort of stuff as well on the pitch. And, the pitch looks just absolutely incredible. So I think they've come on such a long way in the last four or five years. Grass pitches, it's it's it's, uh, it's incredible. Mm. Yeah, as you say, it, it's one of those strange things, and and I, I don't know whether the, the 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 pitches in the Premier League, uh, the Spurs and what have you, are a mixture of mm. grass yeah. and synthetic. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, they are. Yeah, uh, it's funny at the, the sports centre. Uh, Mick, the groundsman, always a smashing guy. Always work. You know, we always had a special relationship. You know, there were some times when the pitch wasn't playable, <clears throat> but we'd play a game, 
And uh, I remember the sports centre managers going absolutely mad. You're not supposed to be playing. The game's been cancelled. Did we know? You know, <laughs> we, we did know, but we just played anyway. We thought we'll, we'll play it. Uh, it was it was it was quite it was quite funny. And of course, we had yeah you know, we had excellent floodlights at the sports centre as well. Yeah. They must be one of the, the first uh, you know, four pylon, uh, very tall ones mm. um, for for a non league club in in the country. I would think like that because they used to be all like four pylons down one side. Well, Phil, funny enough, I'm just looking now. Phil Tucson, actually, I think it was over the last. Oh no, it was, it was actually it was actually Simon Simon uh, Greenhow actually put a picture of. Uh, the floodlights then he said the floodlights just before the sports centre was built on used to love driving in off the A414 for a night game and seeing those in the distance four big H's yeah that's right they were yes of course they were yeah they were in the, in the H weren't they yes that's right god I've forgotten about that well done to Simon for remembering that um, <clears throat> of course Simon was one of those supporters doing all the chanting yeah. <laughs> yes seeing see the H yes they were yeah the H yeah god I've forgotten all about that <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it is one of those things. I mean, have you got you know? Even now, looking looking back at it, you know, being over in the Isle of Wight, you know, have you still got really fond memories of, of the club? Oh yes, um, never will I um, <clears throat> forget the happy times that we had at the football club. Um, there were some some you know sad times when we lost people and what have you. And I'm glad to see you know, old Ronnie Bruce is still yeah, he's still there. About it was funny in in the, in the good old days, Ron. He was a fireman. Used to come used to, when when he was working. Used to bring the fire engine down <laughs> and uh, and stand outside the fire engine to watch a little bit of the game. Also, in one, um, and you know, great having you know, great character is Ron. Um, I, I I love the days at the football club, and um, it changed dramatically with the the move to to uh, Royden, uh, Royden Road, to, to Barrows Farm. It did change. And uh, that was a, a, a real uh, a real shame. Um, it wasn't the same after that. But you know, we we had to move on. There was we had no we had no choice. And uh, you know what what Jeff did in in, in those, at those times was was superb. Mm. Well, when was the last time you was at you was at the uh, at the ground? Um, the last time I was at, at the ground. Oh. If it were ten years ago now, it must be ten years. Um, I think I made. No, I, I think I came up there uh, when we came back to see our son in Harlow on in probably about 2008, uh, 2018. We came back, and I drove up into 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 Barrow's Farm and just just had a quick look. Right. Uh, I haven't been to a game. Um, I haven't been to. I've only. I think last season I went to one football match. Um, last season, um, but I, uh, where football was my life, <clears throat> other than working. It, it you know, there are other things now that, that I, I, I do that uh, said because I, I don't go and watch football on the island here. Um, I don't think I've watched ever watched one game mm. here on the island. Um, it, it, I don't have the same interest. Harlow Town uh, was and and in some respects is my football club. I know I'm an Aldershot Town fan, uh, but that stemmed from from family and back to 1966. But Harlow Town will always be. Very happily remembered. Mm. Um, not only by myself, but my wife Marcia. She, she used to uh, work behind a bar and would do the burger bar and what have you. And the, you know, always remember the queues for the burger bar at the old sports centre when she did it. <laughs> because I don't know, she had a special way of doing burgers, and people used to love choking up for their burgers. <laughs> um, and they, they, those are the real um, uh, happy, happy times and happy days. Mm. So I mean, with 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 all of that, I mean, you, when when we were going through the period of playoff finals and playoff semi finals and, and 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 getting promoted, you know, sort of three or four years ago, I mean, was you was you following that on on social media or oh, like that? I do follow that. I, I I I get the I get the results come mm. through um, on one of the, the football apps. Um, I do follow the club, follow the club's fortunes and and what have you um, as to you know when when they're playing and and the, the games. Um, it, if if I were there in in the town, <clears throat> it would be much much different uh, for me. But um, where I am now, it's just a little bit different, a much different a different way of life. You know, instead of going to football on a Saturday, we'll we'll take the dogs out to Freshwater or or, mm. or go to Black Angle China or somewhere and and you know go for, go for long walks with them and make a cup of tea out the back of the uh, bongo that we had. Yeah. Uh, it's that sort of 
that sort of thing. If, say, if we are in Harlow, I'd be definitely the football club. Well, Harlow, Shanklin. I wonder which one you would choose. Maybe Shanklin every day of the week, I think. Uh, at the <laughs> moment, yeah, Shanklin every day of the week. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a much different... And the funny thing is that you, you know, wherever we walk, and there are people who walk past, they always say hello, and um, uh, they're always really nice to talk to. And, and I don't know whether you knew this about Shanklin, but <clears throat> we have a, guard, a set of gardens here in the old village called Wildstone Gardens. Right, okay. And that's where they filmed the little golfing thing. In, uh, uh, that'll be the day with David Essex and Ringo Starr. Oh, right, okay. Filmed on the island, and, and that their little, little little putting green there. Mm-hmm. And it's I, I get fascinated when we, we take the dogs for a walk around. I get fascinated realising that, you know, that they were there playing. So if you see the film, that'll be the day. Mm-hmm. But they, they were playing their, their little little round, their little golf on there. Well, um, we, uh, we, were, that's nice. we were walking down Shanklin. Uh, some 21 years ago and my wife almost I think if we'd have been there a week later my wife would have actually given birth to our second child in Shanklin because we actually oh, got right. back and it was only a few days after we got back on the mainland that she actually gave birth to my oh, 20 right. and she was 21 this year so I always remember that because he was walking down there and it was uh, it, we, 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 we massive memories and I must have I do, did enjoy uh, you used to come down and the reason I asked you about the the playoff finals was because the very last broadcast on Hawks Radio was actually the playoff final against uh, Hornchurch uh, because me and my present uh, co-host uh, of the show actually did live commentary of the, the, the game between Hornchurch and, and Harlow and that was the last ever uh, broadcast, uh, I suppose live broadcast shall we say, that was ever uh, on Hawks Radio. Mm. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I think I do have a memory now of that. So my memory's shot now, but I, I do, I do have a, a memory of that. And it's a shame, you know, that uh, you know, Hawks Radio is, is no longer an entity because I think it, it, um, it could add something mm. to the club. It's already, uh, you know, it's very, very community based, but it could add a little bit, a bit more something to it. Say, particularly with an FM mm. edge to it, um, where you're not. Uh, you know, you're not trying to compete with um, 1017 or whatever yeah. they call themselves now as a local radio station, mm. but you're doing something a little bit different. You're more more for the community and the the, ex- the excellent work the club has done and is doing within the community is amplified by by the radio station. Mm. I must admit those 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 days I absolutely enjoyed. If I ever got the chance to go back to it again, I'd run yeah. it <laughs> because it was the most, some of the most enjoyable times ever. Yeah, no, they were fantastic days, Dave. And well done to you. No, thank you. For what you did. No, thank you. And thank you to you, because I say, if it wasn't for you, then, uh, you know, we wouldn't be doing the show and still doing the show uh, uh, to, to this day. But, uh, but Steve, it's been fantastic chatting to you today. The time's running away from us, but uh, really pleased to, uh, to see you. And hopefully I can, uh, once all this COVID's uh, done and dusted, then... Uh, uh, I'll speak to the missus and maybe we'll come up for a holiday over into the Isle of Wight and maybe we'll be able to meet up. We have we have lots of lots of friends come over here from various places and they all love coming to uh, to Shanklin and uh, yeah and the island itself and really enjoying what we enjoy. It's, mm. it's something totally different. No, it's, it's like being on it's like being on holiday twenty four seven. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. But listen, mate, a massive thank you, and hopefully we'll. No, see thank you, you David. Thank you for the, for your time. It's been, been brilliant. No, really worries. enjoyed it. No worries. Thank you very much indeed, and of course. We've got uh, coming up on the next episode. We should be having uh, ex manager, um, uh, Mr. Kevin Warren. He'll be joining us um, as well. And also, hopefully, we'll be having the likes of Mr. David Hughes uh, uh, on. Also, we've got the contact numbers now for the likes of Mark Salmon and people of that ilk as well. So, hopefully, we'll try and get those guys on in future episodes. But a massive thank you to Steve once again. But until next time on My Harlow, My Life, good night.